Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? I'm Nathan Gray. Hmm. You know, I don't like this. Fuck, man. If you can believe it, right now I'm facing kind of one of the simplest, dumbest fears I've ever felt in my life. The idea of starting this, or rather restarting these YouTube channels and like really going at it scares me enough to the point that I lash out at my family and I blame other people when things don't line up right and I think I can't get stuff done or I say that I can't get stuff done. So two things need to happen. I need to kind of lower my standards. I've been a video per perfectionist. This space, as you call it, YouTube doesn't require perfectionism. This modern video production doesn't require professionalism. All the things that I thought or needed to be a videographer went out the window over 10, 15 years ago. I have lots of different coffee cups and coffee mugs, but I really still like these simple, they used to be one or two dollar Ikea coffee mugs. Uh, so this is my YouTube video reintroducing myself. My name's Nathan Gray. I'm a videographer, Nathan Gray Video. It's been my email handle for a long time. And I've made the conscious decision to live up to it for myself for the first time. I've worked as a video professional for over, well, I've worked as a video professional since 2004. So for 20 years, I've worked as a video professional, getting different jobs for other video production companies, obviously, and, and big, big places. I worked in the BOK arena. I was the handheld wireless video camera operator at the BOK arena for over 10 years. Worked with video production companies who did in-house stuff, but also really big live shows. This company, Avcom Productions, we used to put on big setup, 30 foot tall screens, 100 feet wide and projectors all blended together and big, big videos, what I'd call it. And I've, in more recent years, shot a lot at concerts, out at the casinos. By and large, the only creative video making stuff I did was just here and there to kind of keep it going, just to make sure I could still do it. Hey! Take it easy. Ah. Since about over eight years ago was the last video job that I had sitting down editing other people's stuff that was working for Jim Halsey doing the Halsey Institute uh, music business education program. Here and there I've had the I've taken the chance to make little videos little skits and stuff with friends just to keep the juices flowing and, and, and to stay creative and make sure I still got it. Hey Chimo what's that man? Dude, check out this new trick I just learned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buy three spinners, get the fourth one free. Buy a pair of shoes, get a free fidget spinner today at Quickie Mart, 53rd and Peoria. But really, I'm bringing it all back to the couch today because this is where it all started. When my friend Robert and I set out, when we made our minds to, uh, to make our own. As you may know, Beef Bologna is broadcasted here in Oklahoma, and we've gotten a great response. But what you may not know is that we simulcast in many Eastern European and Slavic nations. Well, let's take it back to this. We were heavily inspired by Wayne's World, which is even though it was a fictional movie, we didn't take it that way. In our minds, we were like, let's do that. They're just a couple guys who make a TV show out of their basement and they get it on TV. Because of public access TV, they, it was easy for them to get on. So we came up with our concept called Beef Bologna, and this is the show that we wanted to be is partly inspired by something even worse on TV was called the Auction Line Network. And we found ourselves, you know, around 20 years old, staying up very late at night watching these auction lines. And it was a very poorly made people in a shed selling stuff that looked like garage sale items in an auction format to people who would call in online and, and talk with them. And, and we thought, wow, if people are sitting around, if we're sitting around watching this right now, like we could make a show with skits and dumb stuff that we thought was funny and almost anybody will watch it. <laughs> so because we knew other people watched this auction line. All righty then. Oh, I got to find my thingy so I can show you my delay. Hang on a second. Here it is. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. 
So between that and the inspiration from the fictitious Wayne's World, that's what we set out to do. We were 20 years old and we, we wanted to make sketch comedy videos. We put together a pilot and that took almost a year of just kind of working on skits and working on things, working on segments that we could put together. Uh, but also all the while we were still in college. So after about a year putting our pilot together, uh, we took the pilot and shopped it to the local channels. And, and really we went first for what we wanted the most uh, which is to be right on, on right after to be on right after Saturday Night Live. To our surprise, they were into it. Uh, the KJRH, the, no, the Tulsa Channel Two or NBC affiliate, um, liked the idea and agreed to put us on at twelve o'clock. So midnight Saturday nights on Channel Two would be right after Saturday Night Live ended. We would roll on, and so now we had something to sell. We had a commitment, we had a, our, our show. With that, we could go out and get sponsors. Uh, and that's what we did. We went out and got Jason's Deli and, and Empire Bar and a bunch of, a couple different uh, vintage thrift, like thrift, like vintage clothing stores. Um, and had a, even a couple independent donors uh, that just wanted to contribute something to it. And so we would create commercials for them, like Mr. Dan Mayo. So after we went out and shopped our pilot, we got our we got our, our our time slot, and we got some sponsors lined up. We put together a big party, uh, or organized a big party. Uh, Red Bull was going to help sponsor the party, and gave us some funds to put on a big launch party. It was only a few months before it was all going to air and all going down that we got a message from them. Uh, they pulled it. They decided no, and. And when you got everything pending upon that, that like rocked our world. We didn't quite know exactly what to do. But we set up a meeting with the local Fox uh, affiliate, Fox 23, KOKI, Fox Station. And it went over pretty good. Like they were willing to put it on and it was going to be on at the same time. But rather than their programming, it was going to be as a lease access. So this is the type of stuff you'd see paid programming, you'd see half hour infomercials on. So for $400 a week, Saturday night on Fox, we are on air. comedy television show for Tulsa. It airs Saturdays at midnight on Fox 23. We've spent about a year doing beef bologna and we all have our shoulda, woulda, couldas in life, but that's really one of the, the big regrets I think we all have is that we could have could have all stuck with it or done more with it later. And in about a year after doing beef bologna, uh, we thought, let's take this show to the big time. Uh, we already had our uh, stand-up comedian friend and actor, Josh Fadum, who have you seen a lot of cool things, um, who lived out there and was encouraging us to come on out and let's like, like really get to it. Tulsa's not where it's at. Uh, come to L.A. Um, so bit by bit, we moved out to Los Angeles one at a time. And once you're out there, man, it was every man for himself. It was it was. It was harder to find jobs and it was harder to keep steady stuff going that we that we took for granted in Tulsa. And so sometimes, you know, it's worth it to stick it out in your own small, small pond and be a bigger fish in your in your smaller pond. But doing that led us to other things. Doing that also got me my job with FJ Productions. I worked for four years, uh, three to four years with the Brazilian video production company and had a lot of amazing experiences doing that. The creative side, however, has taken a back seat from pretty much that point on. And I've worked jobs that, well, I kind of believed the old, the old ways that for it to be work, it had to be hard or you had to be suffering or it had to be tough. Um, <laughs> it had to be something worth complaining about at the end of the day. Embracing the idea of being able to be creative, artistic, and how somehow like make money on it beyond just what I do in music, I also play and have a bluegrass band and play music called Grass Crack and, and we, we play out. And so, so for, for the longest time, for the past you know 15 years, that has been my creative outlet that has kept me artistically satisfied while working 
for the most part, regular jobs. But I worked at a skate shop and did sales and management and advertising stuff for the skate and had a, some op, you know, chances through that to scratch my creative itches. Hey, Chimo, what's that, man? Dude, check out this new trick I just learned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buy three spinners, get the fourth one free. Buy a pair of shoes, get a free fidget spinner today at Quickie Mart, 53rd and Peoria. To get to work in a toy store, basically a grown-up toy store, it's pretty low stress when it's a couple blocks from home and I don't have to take my work home with me every day and, and it pays the same as what I was making in video. And But when times are tough and the economy is down, like it's stuff like that that tends to go first when a boss has to make a decision about who to cut and there's two veterans who are making the most money and and they don't owe him any money sometimes it's those two veterans that go that get the chop and and we're looking for something there we find ourselves back seemingly at square one we're not because we have a lifetime of experiences that have led up to that and we we have that but but you feel that way you feel like here i am 44 years old, starting over again. So this is it. This is here I am. This is my crossroads. This is me making a decision to, for the first time in my life, take my artistic endeavors uh, as seriously as I have all these other projects and jobs and things. And uh, it was something I never really thought I could or would do because it felt too selfish. It felt very self-gratifying. To think that doing this is something that, A, that anybody else is going to give a shit about, or will it actually make any money, and can it be sustainable? I mean, I'm a person of habit. The sustainable part's easy. I did this little news show uh, over five years ago I called Three Points, and so I'm going to re kind of recycle that title and that concept in some ways, but Three Points at that time. Three Points started as me and a friend from a co-worker at Whole Foods, Mr. Adam Bilby, just doing an after our shift, little quick little videos of three three little funny things. It was just a list that we have, and we'd have like the topics. And and so it was also, and a lot of these I consider just an exercise. And I'm going to have to call this just an exercise to get my head wrapped around it and get it to be where it's easy for me to do. But that's what the Three Points news show was. For me, it was an exercise. I'd sit down in the back patio every morning with my coffee put my little music on which then you know and this was facebook live streaming because facebook live streaming had just launched and the algorithm was really pushing everything so i would find myself watching friends of mine hanging out at a laundry mat you know drinking a beer waiting for their laundry and with 15 20 other people watching online live and just chatting with them try it out, you know, is what I did. And there was times where through that Facebook Live, I might have, you know, a couple thousand views on it. And really like that, it dropped off. Whether it was the algorithm, whether it was the politics, whether it was this or that. But really, also after the election, of, the initial election of Trump, all there was in news feeds was stuff to talk about regarding Trump. And I felt like there was nothing else that I could bring to the table that I w my, my goal with three points was to share three stories that aren't being talked about on mainstream news each day. And that's what I did, but it, after two and a half years, I did it just for fun, just for this, the, for the exercise of doing it. Every, every morning, whether it was, you know, 100 degrees outside or if it was 30 degrees outside, I was out there and kind of it was all about doing the same setup, same ritual. Uh, the, the weather report was essentially you're here seeing what the weather's like in Tulsa every morning. And so if it's snowy and windy and I'm shivering, it's cold today. But, but there wasn't any, um, any big long-term objective. It was for me to be able to work through this and do it and, and get, in a get in a rhythm, get in a habit of doing the writing. It was really more about the writing, concise writing. So now that brings us to the three points and what, what I plan to do with this now. The reason I'm going to still call it three points is it's going to really encompass kind of the three main things that I really am passionate about being music, uh, food stuff and, and politics, but, um, but that's loose. Uh, it's really going to be an interviewing, sh an interview show with interesting people 
and it could be interesting unknown people. It could be interesting high profile people, whatever that means. And I'm going to keep it simple. The three points will come in the form of three kind of general questions, two of them being softballs and one being a hard hitting question. Not only that, but we also have, it's not that I've not done a lot of dumb stuff and silly things in front of a camera just for yucks, but, but now I'm doing the opposite. Now I'm being sincere. Now I'm being open and honest. Now I'm not taking on a character. Um, and now I'm completely talking in my own voice rather than rattling off the news and some sort of, you know, that was rehearsed. I mean, it wasn't rehearsed. It was just that I got in a pattern of doing it when I was doing the three points news. It was just, you know, I had my thing, my spiel. So I'm going to be doing stuff without a spiel. I'm going to be doing stuff with just videos with just uh, the idea of something that I think people might be interested in or might gravitate to because maybe they're going through the same thing. And I had to watch videos pertaining to this same thing to get me to get myself psyched up for doing this and kind of get my head into uh, on track of how to do it because the how is the big thing when it comes to video production and it comes to making stuff making videos movies films music you know you, you, you always have to ask the how of your, of your, of your how you're gonna knock it out particularly when it comes to big crazy weird ideas you know uh, with beef bologna, that was half of it. We would had to convince other people to get down with our with our skit ideas and our stuff that we wanted to put them in uh, potentially jeopardizing or awkward situations, just in terms of the skits and the weird ideas that we would come up with. So, so, so the how was always at the root of like, all right, we got a great idea, cool. How how are you going to do that? How do you make it look like that? Or how do you? Like you just had that in a dream, so how are you gonna make it out? <laughs> out to look, you know, you got the the power of of year the year two thousand and four technology at your fingertips of movie magic. We were just, we were just green screen and making silly stuff, costumes. So now it's all about how how am I doing this and what are, what are we gonna be talking about? So we've got the three points interview talk show. I'm gonna talk with interesting people. Um, I've also got a gra my Grass Crack band page. So between this channel, Nathan Gray video, this is going to get it all. I have to take the stuff that's music specific related and stuff related to my band and also and also simultaneously sharing and posting through that one. So that's that's the Grass Crack the Band at Grass Crack the Band page. And then we've got three points, which whether in its news form or whether in its interview form, that whole channel, the three points channel will be just that material. And then this page, Nathan Gray videos is, is all of it. And I, I don't, you know, I don't know to what day, to, to what degree a gray zone of video content. It's going to be talks like this and, and l little videos like this that I'm going to try and do it on a daily basis. And then stuff that I actually work towards, whether a, a produced interview with somebody interesting or some sort of instructional video, because we got a lot of interesting things. Though. And I'm told that younger people give a shit about what Gen Xers have to say. So I'm going to test it out. I'm going to test the waters and see if that's actually true. Um, they say we have a wealth of knowledge to share with people that they care to listen about. We'll see. We'll see if that holds up. But no, I mean, I think that's that's possible. I mean, I guess so. Um, you know, it seems to me that, that none of them listen or want it, but, but maybe that's just my perception. Maybe I'm older and jaded and it, and it just seems that way. I mean, I worked at a skate shop for almost 10 years. And so most of the people I was hanging around with were younger millennials and, and younger Gen Z kids in their twenties and stuff. And so for the most part, it doesn't seem to me that they care about what we have to say, but maybe it's not them that I'm talking about. Maybe I'm talking to more of my peers. Um, and Man, I don't know. If any of this helps any any of you, I'm grateful that I got started. And if this gets seen by no one, well, shit, I got started. So I thank you very much for listening today. Uh, I think it's kind of time I get, get started putting some something together next interview or whatever skit. And um, I appreciate you for watching today. And I thank you for joining me on this journey because I'm an obsessive, addictive type personality. If I have a favorite song, 
a new favorite song. I listen to it 300 times in like one or two days. And so if I'm going to go in on this, man, I'm going to go all in. Uh, it might get a little annoying. No, but I mean, yeah, it could get crazy. <laughs> so I thank you very much for watching today. My name is Nathan Gray. You've been watching three points. Oh, thanks for watching. Bye.